Hey everybody, this is Christina from Brush and Bristle Studio. Hope you're having a good day today so far. Today I'm going to go over how to use the neoprene car coaster mock-up. Before we get started, you need to know that this mock-up is only going to be able to be used in Photoshop or Photop. Photop is a free web-based software that you can use. All you need is a web browser, so you can use it on your computer, your iPad. As long as it's got a web browser, you're good to go. I will be splitting up this tutorial into two parts. The first part will go over how to use it in Photoshop. The second part will be over how to use it in Photop. Now, Photoshop and Photop are very similar programs, so I'm not going to go over everything all over again in Photop. I'm only going to go over the things that are different, which is only like one or two things. So if you do plan on using Photop, please make sure you to watch this portion of the tutorial so you don't miss any important information. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Now, if you take a look at your mock-up, you've got two layer groups. You've got car coaster both at once and car coaster individual. Now both at once will allow you to change both coasters at once. So if you're using the same design on both coasters, you can use this one. And if you want to use two different designs, you're going to want to use car coaster individual. And I'll show you how to do that in practice in just a second. So to open up your smart objects, you are going to look for your smart object layer. They're the red tabbed layers right here. We'll click on this thumbnail right here and it will open up your smart object layer. Now you want to open up a design by going to file, open. And I've got two designs here that we can play with. So I'll open up this one. Now you want to copy and paste this into the smart object layer by uh, pressing control A to select all and then control C to copy. Or you can go up here to select and press all and then go over to edit. <laughs> if I can get on the right menu, sorry. Go over to edit and press copy. Once you've done that, you can close this tab, go back to your smart object layer, press control V or go up here to edit and press paste. Now, sometimes you might be using a design that you need to resize. So in order to resize this, you're gonna press Control T, or go up here to edit, and then free transform. And you see it'll give you this little bounding box around your design. So all you have to do is click and drag, and you don't have to do it on the little squares, you can do it on the lines too. So just click and drag, and it'll allow you to resize your design however you need. Once you're happy with the resize, you can hit this check mark up here. And now we can save our um, design, did our smart object. To do that, you're going to press Control S or go up here to File and press Save. Now let's go back over here to the main document. As you see, it's updated it on both of these coasters. Now let's go take a peek at the individual one really fast. So this smart object is shared with the both at once, but the right one, we need to double click and open because this one is separate. So we're going to repeat the steps. We're going to open, get that new design. We're going to select all and copy, close that out. And then we press control V to paste. Again, you can resize it by pressing control T or go to edit free transform. And then we're going to press control S to save or go to file, save and go back to your main document. And as you see, you've got two different designs on the coasters. So these are gonna be the two mock-ups that you get to choose from with this. You can choose between both at once or the individual. Now, here are a couple other little options you can play with. I do have a texture on here. We take that off. You see, it's just the design. Um, you really lose the neoprene picture that's on there. Um, it's pretty faint, but you can always make it darker by bringing this up a little bit. As you see, it does affect the coloration of the design just a little bit, so I'd be careful with that. And let's see, I also have a drop shadow beneath it, and I have it set at a 75% shadow but you are welcome to take that up darker, take it down to a lower shade, whatever you need. I know when you work with different backgrounds, sometimes you want to change the drop shadow. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. 
Now, I also have this up here, this uh, layer group called Extra Highlights and Shadows. Let's turn this on really fast by pressing that little eyeball. And as you see, it does add quite a bit of like shadows and moodiness, I guess. Now you've got a brightness contrast filter and a vibrance filter in here. And to edit these, you just double click on the icon and it'll pull up its panel. So you just click and drag to try and make any changes with that. But as you can see, it's going to affect the entire mock-up, including the background. So you do want to be very careful with this. Um, I'll show you Vibrance really fast. The Vibrance can make it very desaturated, very, very vibrant. <laughs> So, but that can really change the coloration of the design as well. So again, just be very careful when you're messing with these because um, you don't want to misrepresent your design. Now you can use that on either the car coaster both at once or on the individual. And I also have four backgrounds that you can use. You've got a white shimmer, a marble, wood, and paper. And I also have a hue saturation adjustment layer in this folder. So if you want to change the color of these, you can toggle this on, double click this icon here, and it will open up the hue saturation panel. Sometimes this colorize box won't be checked. And if it's not checked, you won't see the colors. So make sure you, you check that box and then you can click and drag and it will let you make it any color that you want. So let's see. Try and make a fun little color. And let's set this to color. Now, if we set it to color, as you see, it's very faint. Now, I like using this on color on the marble because you see how it sticks to the veins. It's really, really cool. Um, you can also put it on like soft light. Um, multiply will make it pretty dark, but this is it on normal. So depending on the kind of look you're going for, you could always play with the blending modes to make some really cool backgrounds with this. Um, I, if you are going to use it with the other backgrounds, I would make sure you keep it on color because it seems to be what works best. So just something to play with, but hopefully that'll give you some more flexibility with your backgrounds. You can also upload your own backgrounds. Just make sure you put it in the backgrounds folder. That way it stays behind all your working files. All right, but that is how you use the Neoprene Car Coaster Mockup in Photoshop. If you plan on using this in Photopea, stick around for a moment and I will get to the tutorial to go over the couple changes in that in a moment. If this is all you needed to see, then I hope I was able to answer any questions you had about this mockup. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me in my Etsy shop or leave a comment down below. Okay, welcome back everybody. So in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to go over how to use the mockup in Photopea. So as I said earlier, Photopea is a free web-based software. As long as you are using a device that has a web browser, you can use Photopea. You just need to go to www.photopea.com. And once you're here, you'll notice that you can connect with any of your th cloud services. You can use a wide variety of files. To get started with the mockup, you want to go to Open from Computer. And you want to navigate to, to the file. So as I said earlier, everything is pretty much the same as in Photoshop. There's just like a couple little things that are different. And that is how you handle the smart object and how you save. So we are going to look for those smart object layers. So remember, look for the red tab layers. And then you're going to double click on this thumbnail right here for the smart object. Opened up your smart object layer. Now, if you go to file, you can go to open like you would in Photoshop, but I would recommend going to open in place because it's going to save you some steps. 
So open in place, open your file, and as you see, it automatically copied, pasted, and set to free transform. So that cut out some nice steps. So once you're happy with how it's sized and everything, you're gonna press this check mark up here to confirm. And then you can press Control S, or you can go up here to File, Save Smart Object. Smart Object updated. Then we'll go back here. And as you see, it is updated. Everything else with this is exactly the same. So I'm not gonna go over everything else with this. But once you're ready to save, you can go over here to File, and then you go to Export As, and then you can click JPEG. I typically save my mockups as JPEGs. So here you'll name your file. If for some reason you accidentally click JPEG, you can always click Format and change what format you really want it at. So if you really wanted a PNG, you could click PNG here. Um, you can also mess with the sizing of the design, but I would be very cautious about that because if you aren't making it a proportional change, you could actually like mess up quality of the mock-up. So all you have to do now is press save and it will save to your downloads folder. So you'll see I've got a uh, little pop-ups here. You can ignore this. Like it is free. It's just gri griping at me because I have my ad blocker on. <laughs> so uh, don't don't uh, worry about having to pay for something after I've told you it's free. It is free. <laughs> um, now, I hope you all have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me either on my Etsy shop or in the comments down below. I hope you enjoy this mock-up and have a great day.